Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct another uh, tutorial about 8086 microprocessor. And uh, in this tutorial, we will be covering about software model. So first of all, we need to know why do we need actually software model, right? So uh, in last tutorial, we have covered internal architecture of microprocessor. If you remember, we discussed internal architecture of microprocessor. What was shown in internal architecture, different circuitry, how they are attached, different wires, different buses, right? A real hardware circuitry was shown in internal architecture. But uh, if we are a programmer and we want to program 8086 or 8088 microprocessor, we doesn't need to know what are the hardwares attached, right? What we need to know, what are internal registers? Uh, what is the size of memory, right? Uh, what is the size of each register and how we can actually access them, uh, what are their functions. So uh, that means from software point of view, we doesn't need to know, uh, we don't need to know about uh, 8086 internal architecture. Rather, we need a software model which can lay out all the registers, all the memory uh, to uh, and present it towards uh, a programmer, which can easily access uh, useful information, which is required for programming. So that's where uh, we come to this software model and we discuss this software model, right? So this software model is just, uh, is sole purpose of software model is just to provide an understanding of microprocessor uh, programming to a programmer, right? So all the uh, stuff which is needed to know or which is needed to, uh, to know for a programmer, uh, that is basically listed in software model, right? So this software model is just for a programmer, right? So let's come back, uh, let, let's uh, focus on this screen. And uh, we see here, there are three different portions available in this specific model. Uh, the very first portion, uh, this is your actual microprocessor, right? Uh, so all the stuff which is present inside this uh, area of the chart or area of the diagram, this is, this is your microprocessor 8086 or 8088, right? Uh, and then there is a second area, which is basically this one. This is, uh, this block is what memory, right? Okay, let me list for you. This is our microprocessor unit, right? And that's your, our memory. And uh, the third important thing, which we need to know for any, micro uh, any microcontroller system or any microprocessor system or any digital system is IO device. So this is basically IO devices space, right? And we will discuss each of them uh, one by one, right? Okay. So if we look at the very first block, which is basically what uh, microprocessor unit what it actually provides. It, it is providing us about all important register, which is to be known for a programmer or uh, which is useful programmer or which are accessible for programmer to, pro, uh, to be used in programming, right? So in total, there are 14 uh, registers. First of all is instruction pointer. Then there are four blocks of segment register. Uh, one is CS, other is DS, other is third one is SS and fourth one is ES, which is code segment, data segment, stake segment and extra segment. So these four registers are basically just segment register, right? This is the segment register portion, right? Okay, let me use another color. So this is what, this is the uh, segment registers, right? And why do we need segment register? We are just coming to this point. Uh, okay, uh, before we go and proceed uh, further uh, internal registers of uh, microprocessor unit, if you look at the memory section, you see there are various blocks or various portions shown in the memory. So this is our complete memory, but if you closely look at it, uh, this is basically what uh, this is this portion is shown as code segment. This portion is shown as data segment. 
this portion is shown as stake segment and this portion is shown as this extra segment. If you remember, I told you 8086 microprocessor is following what one Newman architecture and in one Newman architecture, uh, you have the same memory chip for code or the program and for the data as well. So that is why the complete memory, which is attached to this microprocessor unit is divided into various segments, right? And we will be covering this segmentation uh, procedure in another tutorial again, but uh, uh, for this sake of software model, I'm just explaining that software model also layouts those different segments, right? So you can see that there is a, there is a portion of uh, code segment, which means here you will be storing our code, then data segment, then there is an stake segment. And similarly, there is an extra segment. So we will be discussing them, but uh, you, you know, at this stage that there are four different kinds of segments available in the memory. One is code segment, other is data segment. The third one is stake segment and the fourth one is extra segment. And if you are paying your close attention, you see these arrows are coming from various segment register. So these segments which are present in the memory, these are basically handled with the help of these segment registers. So there are four segment register. One is dedicated for code. That is why it is called code segment register that one can also write CSR, right? Uh, that, that is data segment. So it is man handled used with the help of DS register, which is data segment register. That is why you can also call it DSR, right? For the third segment register is stake segment register, which is responsible for a stake segment. And then fourth stake segment is a segment register is extra segment. Uh, register which is responsible for extra segment right so these four registers are dedicated for these uh, four different uh, portions of memory right okay let's come back to the microprocessor unit and we saw here uh, another four register uh, ax bx cx dx so there are uh, basically special name for them for example ax is known as accumulator bx is known as base register cx is known as count register dx is known as data register right so uh, these uh, four pop uh, uh, these four registers are veil are also known as variables for a programmer right as i told you software model is designed for a programmer right so these are the locations or these are the internal register which are used for scratch uh, or read write purpose right scratch pad right for example i'm using this board uh, okay let me show you an example i'm writing something then i did doesn't need it so what i will do i will remove it right so this is what a uh, programmer will do with these registers so whenever i need uh, a register i will store in these register in these registers that is why these registers are known as data registers so if you consider them 16 bit register so they are ax bx cx dx right but uh, these data register can also be broken into two parts uh, one is lower byte another is higher byte that is why these registers are name is ax is named as al and ah bx is uh, split into BL and BH, CX is split into CL and CH, and similarly, DX is split into DL and DH. So H indicates higher byte or L indicates lower byte, right? Uh, because AX, BX, CX, and DX, these data registers are 16 bit register, so they can be split into 8 bit portions, right? So if you consider them 8 bit register, so there are 8 registers, right? And if you consider them 16 bit register, so there are how many registers? Four registers. Okay, after data segment registers, sorry, after data registers, uh, we have uh, some important register and we will be covering them uh, very soon. So that's why I'm not discussing it, but those important registers at this moment, you can call them. Two of them are basically what base registers and two of them are index register, right? So two types of, uh, sorry, uh, two of them are what pointer register. Let me write again, pointer register. So if you closely looking at this picture, SP and BP, stack pointer and base pointer. So these two are basically what uh, pointer register. That is why the upper two register are pointer register. And then the th the lower two register, which are SI and DI. So this, these, these are what? These are 
index which is the source index and destination index so in coming tutorial we will be discussing them but these are again important register and these are again accessible to programmer that is why they are included in software model right okay then there is a register uh, which is the last register to be included that is basically what sr sr is what status register status is normally known as flag register let me write if you remember uh, you have seen these register in your uh, computer organization course or uh, microcontroller courses right so flag register is important register in which you can actually use uh, and use this uh, different conditions are stored right for example if last operation was zero there is a special flag which is known as zero flag which is present is as a bit so that will be set we will be covering that flag register in detail in coming tutorials so uh, there this last register is what flag register so this is one these are four plus four plus four so 13 and the topmost register uh, this is what IP instruction pointer. Normally, in stay in literature, if you will find it, you will find a. This is what instruction pointer. Pointer, right? So this uh, the topmost register which I am discussing in the very late uh, or in the very end, right? So that is very, what instruction pointer and what is the function of instruction pointer? It will actually point towards the next instruction, right? Normally in literature, it is called program counter. Uh, normally, uh, classically people call it program counter because it points toward program and it helps uh, the microprocessor or microcontroller to track the program sequen in sequential flow, right? So instruction pointer will always point uh, toward the next instruction right so you know that instructions or code are stored in code segments so instruction pointer will also be helping cs somehow in the management of code segment right uh, i hope uh, this point is clear right because instruction pointer is related with instructions or code and code is stored in code segment so instruction pointer is also related with code segment Okay, so this is this portion is cover 14 registers which are internally present and they are important for programmer. They are included in software model than this memory, right? Okay, in memory, we know that there are four different kinds of segments, but uh, what is the minimum address and what is the maximum address, right? So minimum address, one can see it is 000 hex, right? And it is FF hex, right? So basically, uh, if I write it, the minimum address is what zero 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 hacks right and it goes to what f f f f hacks right so if you closely observing this address how many uh, bits are involved in the address basically there are 20 bits involved in the address because there are five hexadecimal symbols and each hexadecimal symbol equals to four bits so there are 20 bits right so two power 20 that would be what that would be the number of locations right because 2 power 20 mem uh, locations are possible so there are how many how much uh, memory that is basically 1 million so 1 million memory slots are available okay when i say memory slots so that means uh, there will be 1 million memory uh, slots available in external memory of microprocessor 8086 and 8088 but each slot can carry around 8 bit okay the single slot capacity is what 8 bit of information so we have how much how many slots 1 million slots that is why the size of uh, 8086 external memory is 1 megabyte because there are 1 million location or 1 mega location and each location can carry how many bytes one byte so that is why that overall uh, size of memory is basically what one megabyte okay let me uh, put it here so i hope this point is also clear that there are how many locations one million location and each location can carry one byte that is why the total uh, size of the memory is one megabyte okay then we come back to the the, the third portion of our uh, software model and that is what that is this uh, io space 
input I/O space, right? And if you closely observing it, there there are also some uh, addresses are given. And if you see it, it's uh, let me write it for you, just to clarify it more. These are basically four hexadecimal symbols. So four times zero, uh, the minimum address, and the maximum address is what f f f the four times f, right? So uh, how many? bits are here included since each hexadecimal symbol includes uh, around uh, four bits so four hexadecimal symbols are used so it is a 16 bit uh, address right so for input output we have around 2 power 16 space available and 2 power 16 is is equal to what as i told you uh, for in case of memory we have 2 power 20 because 20 bit address so in case of input output we have 2 power 16 right which is equal to what 64 kilo i hope you can easily sue this sum uh, and how it is because 2 power 16 can be broken into 2 power 6 into 2 power 10 and 2 power 10 is equal to 1k right that is basically coming from this 2 power 10 and 64 is coming from 2 power 6 so total 64k input output devices can be attached to 8086 or 8088 microprocessor this is something which is very uh, excellent approach designed by intel uh, designers of intel who actually designed 8086 or 8088 microprocessor. So in total, you have around how many address available for input output devices around 64K. That means uh, virtually you can attach 64 kilo or to be exact 65,536 uh, devices can be attached to uh, this uh, Intel 8086 or 8088 microprocessor. And that is also supposed to be known for a programmer that that is why it is also included in software model, right? Okay, here uh, we have summarized all the important stuff which is to be known for a programmer or which is to be useful for a programmer. That is why this is this model is known as software model of 8086 or 8088 microprocessor. Okay, uh, if we classify uh, the difference, the classical difference between the software model and uh, the micro architecture, which we have seen in the last tutorial, right? Uh, I hope you, the viewers have already seen my last tutorials, right? In last tutorial, we discussed micro architecture. So micro architecture is quite specific about the hardware, right? So that is why that hardware, that micro architecture is applicable to only one microprocessor. But software model is kind of uh, uh, our layout, which is providing about internal registers, which are useful for uh, in various microprocessor. That is why software model is applicable to various microprocessor generations, right? But uh, my, a microprocessor architecture will stay to single uh, uh, single generation, right? So software model in current uh, Intel microprocessor, you can actually use this software model as a baseline and you can actually build your further advancement on this software model, right? Uh, you will find these things in current um, microprocessors given by Intel, but micro uh, architecture or internal architecture won't be same. It, you will have to study it for each microprocessor generation. So that is a key difference between software model and internal architecture. I hope uh, in this lecture, we have learned a lot about software model, why it is needed and why it is differentiated with uh, internal micro, internal architecture of microprocessor and why it is so important for software programmer, programmer or software engineers, right? Uh, if you have any question or any query related to this uh, tutorial, you can post them in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.